in the center of Ecuador, South America, is the country's highest mountain, Mount Chimborazo. For millennia, its peak has been covered in glaciers. But in the past three decades, the view from space has started to change. Chimborazo is losing its ice. Its glaciers act as reservoirs, supplying water to thousands of people in the towns and villages below. As the glaciers melt, local people questioned what would happen to their water supply. One man set out to find an answer. Professor Jeff Lafreniere of Gustavus Adolphus College in Minnesota is studying glacier change and its impact on water supply. Jeff and his team have traveled to Ecuador and have set up camp beneath the peak of Mount Chimborazo. People were asking what's happening with our water supply. It's going higher and higher up the mountain. There's less and less ice and snow. And so what's going to happen in 20 years with our water supply? And that was a great question and there wasn't a good answer to that. So here we are. So what I have found in my work here is that between 1986 and 2013, the ice surface area on Chimborazo decreased by 21%. We're now trying to understand how deep the ice is compared to how it used to be. To measure the changes to the ice, Jeff and his team have come up with a unique plan. We have developed a unmanned aerial vehicle or a drone that we will be flying over parts of two of the largest glaciers on the mountain, taking hundreds of pictures at a time from different perspectives to create a three-dimensional model that we tie in with GPS points that we actually take on the mountain that tells us within a 10 centimeter resolution all over the glacier surface exactly where it is in terms of its elevation and its X and Y coordinates. By combining data year on year, they will be able to track changes to the glacier over time. At 5,500 meters, every step is a challenge. Altitude can definitely be dangerous and people die when they come to high altitudes and they haven't acclimatized properly. You can get pulmonary edema or cerebral edema uh, from altitude as well, um, which can kill you. There's less oxygen to breathe and you have no choice but to step, pant, step, pant, and it's incredibly difficult. And it's not just the humans who struggle. So there are a lot of challenges to trying to take a drone to fly at these altitudes to see if we can actually map glaciers with precision. We are flying at one of the highest elevations that a drone can fly. Our biggest impediment here is just the weather. It's a really cloudy place, and especially at the glacier line, you might be sitting in the fog for days. With a successful drone flight, they have been able to map the glacier, providing the first set of precious data. I feel quite a sense of responsibility to do the science uh, as well as I can, not only because I want to make sure the information that I provide to the greater world about how climate change is affecting Ecuador and the glaciers here uh, is the best as it can be, but more particularly because the people here need good information if they're to make the right decisions to deal with a rapidly changing environment. And if I can help provide some of that information so they can make the best decisions possible, then I think that's one of the most important things I can contribute.